So a real quick review, we're looking at x and y intercepts today. That's our objective for you guys to be able to find x and y intercepts and to use them to make graphs. An intercept is where a graph crosses an axis, where it crosses the y-intercept, where the y-axis is when that's a y-intercept, where it crosses the x-axis is the x-intercept. I would like you guys to write down a term we talked about the other day, standard form. When we have standard form, we can use the equation to find the intercepts. And again, standard form is ax plus by is equal to c. If I want to find the y-axis, or the y-intercept where it's going to cross the y-axis, I can replace the x. Replace, uh, what did I just write? <laughs> Replace the x with zero to find the y-intercept. We will do this in a few minutes so that you guys see why this works. But if you think about why it works, let's go back and look at this quick graph we just sketched. Whatever this point is here, and it looks like it's like in a positive one, that means that this coordinate pair, the x was zero and the y was positive one. So if I replace in the equation the x with zero, that means that my coordinate pair, the x, is, y pair, the x is going to be the zero and the y number is where it's going to cross the line. If I do the opposite, if I want to find the x-intercept, I can replace the y with 0. And I will have an x-y pair, where in this case, I have some number that is my x, and the y is 0. And if you go back and think about this graph, this looks like it's probably at negative 1. So I moved left negative 1, and did I go up or down from there? Wait, uh, it's 0. Uh, That's because if it's on the axes, one of the coordinate pair numbers has to be the 0. So when we have the equation, we can put a number in for that. Um, and find the opposite. So let's let's do a couple problems together. I had you guys get out a piece of paper, but we're not going to use it yet. We're going to do some of the problems right here in our spiral. Turn to the left side. And if you want to look in your book, I'm going to be doing some problems straight from the problem section of your book. So it's on page 310. <clears throat> First, let's look at number 2. Here is the problem for number 2. It's asking us to find the x and the y-intercept. Where is the x? It looks like the x one is all the way over at negative 5. Okay, so here's how we would write that. The x-intercept, 310, is negative 5. The y-intercept, I'm going to go up and down the y-axis now. Where is the y? intercept? It's at 1. So that means that the y-intercept is 1. Well, that translates to xy pairs. So let's put the parentheses here, and let's really think about what this means. 
For the x-intercept, I move to the left negative 5. And I didn't go up or down because it's on the axis still. So its coordinate pair is negative 5, 0. What's going to be true then for the y-intercept? It's going to be 0 for the x because we didn't go left or right. We just went up to 1. So their xy pairs always have a 0. You just have to think about Am I on the x-axis or the y-axis? Feeling okay about looking at a graph and finding those? Yes. So let's go down. If you have your book open, I'm going to write down number 5 on page 310. <clears throat> it is 2x minus 4y equals 4. And this is in AX plus BY equals C form, where you see a number in place for the A, B, and C, and you see the X and Y where they're supposed to be. Can you guys see the equation? If I put a zero in here for the X, it would reread, or we would rewrite this as two times zero minus 4y equals 4. What's going to happen with that 4 times 0? It's going to go away because anything times 0 is 0. That leaves us with negative 4y equals 4. To get the y by itself and find out what the y-intercept is, we're going to divide by negative 4. And the y-intercept is negative 1. We're going to do the same thing to find the x-intercept. We're going to replace y with 0. So 2x minus 4 times 0 equals 4. What is that going to leave us with in our next step? 2x equals 4. What are we dividing by this time? 2. x-intercept is 2. Or what we're saying is when the y is 0, the x is equal to 2. That means this one's pair would be 2 comma 0. And this one's pair would be 0, comma, negative 1. Where's my stamp? Have we had it up here yet? It needs to be passed over here. Okay. Without the stamp, if you don't have one, just make a real quick graph over here. Could you on a very simple graph, graph 2 comma 0? Yes. Okay. 2 comma 0 would be about here. And on the same graph, 0 comma negative 1? That would be about... Probably be about here. Can I draw that line? Yes. You only need two points on a graph to make the line. If you have the x and y intercept, you can graph the line. We're going to do another one that's a little bit more challenging. This is number six in your textbook if you want to write it down by looking at your book or just watch what I'm doing. I've got negative 2y is equal to 3x minus 6. Is that in standard form? No. It is not in standard form. What's in the wrong place? The y is in the right place because the y needs the y needs to be next to the equal sign. 
what what's on this side that shouldn't be? That's 3x. And it's a positive 3x, so if we're going to shift it to the other side to get this in the right form, we have to subtract, have to subtract it. And we're going to shift everything into the right place. Negative 3x has to go first because ax, in this case the a is negative 3. And then by, in this case the b is negative 2, equals our c which is negative 6. Okay, I'm going to show you a shortcut for the intercepts. What happened when we multiplied the x term by 0? That part just got zeroed out, didn't it? So we, we have what I like to call the cover-up method. If I want to find the y, I can just cover up the x. Because if I put a 0 in there, negative 3 times 0 would have been 0. And what are we left with? Negative 2y equals 6. Why take the time to write down negative 3y times 0? If I cover it up, that's the same as zeroing it out. I know that in this pair, my x is going to be 0. My y is going to be whatever happens when I divide by negative 2. When I divide negative 2 into negative 6, what does y become? Y becomes 3. So this pair is 0, 3. It is the same thing, it's just taking a shortcut. I call it the cover-up method. If I cover up the y term, what am I going to find? You're going to find positive that two. it's positive 2. X is positive 2, which means I've got 2 comma 0. Can I graph that? Yes. Really simple graph, unless you've got my lovely graphs already on your paper. I never got the stamp. 0, 3 would be up about here. And 2, comma 0 would be about here. Here's my line. It's negative. Which kind of makes sense if you go back to the original equation. Everything in that was negative, wasn't it? Who's feeling okay about these kinds of problems? Okay, awesome. Those of you who are, you're going to be able to do the work. Other, the rest of you will join me. But before we go, I want us to look at a story problem. Oh, no. I hate story problems. <laughs> We're going to do number eight together. If you do not have your book open to 310, I'd like you to. All right, I'm going to read number eight. It says, to, to thaw a specimen stored at negative 25 degrees Celsius, the temperature of a refrigeration tank is raised 5 degrees Celsius every hour. The temperature in the tank after x hours can be described by the function f of x is equal to negative 25 plus 5x. So I'm going to graph the function and find its intercepts. Well, when I look at this equation, I'm going to rewrite this instead of f of x. I'm just going to use y is equal to negative 25 plus 5x. Is that negative 25? It is negative 25. This 5, or 5x needs to be over with the y for it to be in standard form. I'm going to have to subtract it. So I've got negative 5x plus y is equal to negative 25. If I use the cover-up method, what's my y-intercept? Okay, so the y-intercept is 0 comma negative 25. Whatever I've covered up, I write in my ordered pair as 0. I covered up the x. So I put this in the place for the x in my ordered pair. Then I cover up my y, and I get negative 5x is equal to negative 25. Okay, x equals 5. So in this case, 5 comma 0. 
Who's got my stamp? Thank you. Oh. Wake up computer. Okay. I'm going to count these as 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Oops, sorry. My stamp is off the screen. Thank you. Still off the screen. Still off the screen. There we go. I'm going to count these little dashes as fives. So negative 5, negative 10, 15, 20, 25. This is where 0, negative 25 would be. And going across the x-axis, I have to get to 5. So I'm just going to count these as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm not going to draw my line down through this because it started at negative 25 and it steadily got warmer. Because it was at negative 25 degrees. It was at negative 25 degrees and every hour it got 5 degrees warmer. That means it's positive. The temperature is going up. It could continue. This is showing up to 5 hours. Because the y-axis is showing the degrees Celsius, that's where the temperature is, and this over here is the time. The x-axis is showing the hours. So the question's asking two things. A, can you graph the function and find its intercepts? Well, we did find the intercepts and, and graphed it from them. B, what does each intercept represent? What's the temperature at the y-intercept? What's the temperature at the x-intercept? No, the temperature is not 5. The temperature is... How much warmer is it getting? It's going up by 5 each hour. Okay, but listen to my question. What is the temperature at 5 hours? The temperature at 5 hours is... Zero. It's zero degrees. <laughs> what would the temperature then be at one at six hours? It's going to five degrees. And at seven hours? Thirty-five. Ten. Ten. It's going up by ten every hour. So the y-intercept is the beginning. I'll move it up. The y-intercept is the beginning at negative 25 degrees Celsius. The x-intercept is the five hours at what temperature? Zero degrees. Zero degrees Celsius. That's how you would answer the A and B of that question. A, intercepts and graph. B, what does the graph mean? What's happening at those points on the graph? Okay, so you guys are gonna have problems like those, and then you're going to use intercepts to graph some problems. So the numbers we're doing today, and this is also on Classroom, on page 310 to 311, you're doing numbers 13 to 29. Oh, that's too many graphs. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it's not. It's only six graphs. 13 to 29. Yeah. 13 to 29. Okay, yes, it's almost a 20-minute video. Yeah.